Hi, it's Michelle with some tips for searching online. Though we usually use Google as a search engine, you don't have to use Google. There are a lot of other search engines. One of my favorite alternates is DuckDuckGo because it searches you without being tracked. But I am going to demonstrate how to search with a Google search because that's what we tend to use most often. Though you can go to Google and go to google.com to search, you don't have to, it's an extra step. If you're going to google.com every time you do a search, that is an extra step that you do not have to do because if you are using the Google Chrome browser, which I am right now, you can type up in the web address bar and type any search term you want and it will take you there. So I'm going to type how to search and then enter. can filter your results. They always default to be web results, so internet sites, but you could filter it for images if you click images right here. Now I'm in images. I could also click videos and get videos and later I'm going to show how you can search specifically on YouTube. There's also news. My favorite thing when you're doing an image search is to click tools and then you get this little hidden menu and it lets you select by usage rights. You can also filter by size and color and all these other things but the one I love the most is the usage rights because it helps me to find images that are okay for me to reuse. I still have to check them because it may not be completely accurate so you always want to check One of my favorite filters on web results is to click tools and then the hidden menu pops up and I like to narrow down by a, a date range, particularly if I'm looking for directions, how to use a digital tool, for example. You want to get recent directions. If you don't narrow it down to past year, then you could get something from five years ago and everything looks different now filter by time. That can help you find what you need much faster. Another tip is to install the extension Web of Trust. Chrome extensions are free programs that you can install in your browser. It's easy to find the Web of Trust extension and install it by doing a Google search. After it's installed, when you're doing a Google search, you'll see circles to the right of your search results. If they're green, that means that they've been rated as safe and you can look at their scorecard. I usually just avoid the red circles or I'll read the scorecard to see why it's been rated that way before I click on it. It's just a tool to help keep you from clicking on questionable websites. My next tip is to always read the results. So many people just click on the very first link and it may not be good and you could waste your time looking at it and it's not even what you need. So always read the titles, look at the clues in the description. So this ends in .com. As you scroll down, remember we're looking at the clues. This is a blog at hubspot.com. I don't know who's made this. I'm not familiar with them. It's an older post. Uh, it gives 31 Google advanced search tips. That's an awful lot of advanced search tips. And they're not recent, so a lot changes in two years. So I'm not going to click on this one. There are a lot of great clues in the search results. There's what they end in, like .com or .org. .org does not immediately mean that it's a trustworthy organization because any organization can purchase a .org website. Anybody can purchase .com, .net, .org. The only websites that are limited are ones that end in .gov, which is a government website, or .edu, which is only universities. So remember to look at the dates, at the descriptions, at the titles of each website and also at the full web address to see what it ends in. Those are all clues that help you decide if you want to 
use the time to click on that site and check it out. It's okay to click next and look on the second page of results. It's also okay to go back and change your search terms and adjust them. And sometimes I will look at some of my results, go to those web pages, and then I get ideas for better search terms to use because I know specifically what I'm looking for. Another great way to find what you need is to click on settings and use advanced search. Now everything that you can do here on advanced search, you can also do in your search, regular search box. But what I like about this advanced search page is it reminds you or teaches you how to do it. So if I want an exact word or phrase like quotation marks, because I want to learn about how to search with quotation marks, I can type it here. And when I go down to the bottom and click advanced search, look, it put quotation marks in quotation marks. It did that for me. Uh, right now, I would like to find a result that is a university site, which ends in .edu, and I don't remember the shortcut to do that. So I can click on Settings and Advanced Search, and then I can scroll down to where it says Site or Domain, and then I can type .edu, and that is going to narrow it to just .edu. And the thing is, it also reminds me of how to do that. So I need to remember for next time that if I type Site, colon edu it's going to limit all of my results to just edu results and now when i scroll through my results they all end in edu which means they've all been created by universities as only universities are allowed to have edu websites use the filter if you click on filter it will let you filter just by more recent videos. This is fantastic, when, especially if you're looking for videos on how to do something. And if it's how to do something digitally online, you want recent. But remember, if you get too recent, you may not get a lot of results. I also like to do shorter videos, especially when I'm looking for videos to share with other people. So now that I filtered this, all of my videos are recent within the past year and they're all less than four minutes long.